I think this is more lumber than I've ever bought at one time before. We've got a ton of cherry. We've got a ton of hard maple that's gonna be made into cutting boards. Guys, these are like 12 foot long pieces. There's so much lumber. Look at the walnut over here for some charcuterie boards. I've definitely had more lumber on the rack, but this is the most I've ever bought at one time, I think. I remember back when we were still in the garage in North Dakota, I dreamed of needing this much lumber. I almost did. I almost ordered this much lumber for a huge project that we had a bid accepted on. I had just landed this huge project for a restaurant build out that we actually lost. We actually lost the job. It was going to be a huge restaurant build out with two bars, a bunch of tables, and I was going to build all this from a one car garage shop and then we lost the job somebody ended up going to jail anyway I'm getting ahead of myself I want to tell you the story about it but none of it's gonna make sense unless I tell you how we got the job let me grab Jenny because I think she remembers it better do you remember that huge restaurant build out that we were going to do in North Dakota yes oh my gosh yes okay. I do I want to tell that story oh, today. That, was, that was a debacle that was something else so before we made half a million dollars selling our stuff, we were stationed in North Dakota with the Air Force and we were just starting our little baby business okay. out of our garage the first time. Yes. And uh, we were selling furniture to our friends and making a couple hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there. Uh, we really had no idea what we were doing, but our business was growing and we heard that a local coffee shop owner was going to open up a restaurant and a bar mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, we just, we got really excited and we started doing what we tell you guys to do and that's to go talk to people about the stuff that you make. So we heard this restaurant was opening up. I thought, you know what? I can do a restaurant <laughs> build out and I sent you to go talk to uh, the lady that was going to open the restaurant to yeah. close the deal down. Yes, so this was right after we had watched a video from Ben Ueda where he had done that um, big commercial build out with the shoes oh, on yeah, the wall. Oh yeah, for the shoe store, yeah. Yes, and we just thought that was the coolest thing. We were like, that is amazing. We should go talk to local businesses and see what they need. So then we found out that this coffee shop was gonna open a restaurant. So I went to go talk to the ladies. I went and I got my little coffee and I was like all nervous and I went to talk to them and I was like, hey, um, I heard that you're gonna open a restaurant in the back of the coffee shop and they're like, oh yeah, we're excited, we love it. Obviously it's in the early stages of planning, but it's gonna be amazing. And I was like, hey, um, I am a custom furniture business and I would love to help with the build out, to do the build out, to give you tables, basically give you everything you need to make this place look like the restaurant of your dreams. And they were actually super thrilled about that because we were in kind of a smaller town and you could tell that they had a very specific style that they wanted to nail in this um, restaurant coffee shop Do you shop remember what area. it was? Do you remember the style? Yeah, so it was very industrial. It was like an industrial modern because the building was in an old brick building, I think, downtown. Oh, that's right. It was in our old church building. It was yes. on that first floor. Yeah. Yes. So that was the, kind of the vibe they wanted. And I was like, well, if they want to stick with that, they're going to need somebody who's really good at custom and can, you know, take their design, you know, into account. So I went to talk to them. They were super excited. We scheduled another meeting where her and I sat down and we kind of just talked design. Um, and after I got all of the info, everything she was looking for, it was like two bars, I think like six large tables, like 12 benches, all sorts of random stuff. And then I brought that all back to Davis and you put it in SketchUp. Yeah. So you drew it all up. And so we were ready to make this like an official bid. So we drew it all up. I was so scared. She's making me sound really good. I was terrified. <laughs> I was, I had never done like that scale of thing before. I just thought, well, figure out a way to get it done. And so I thought I need to show her as close to reality as it's going to look, or she's not going to be able to use her imagination and figure it out. So right. I sat in SketchUp for what felt like hours. It, well, it was hours. It was hours. I think I stayed up like most of the night one night trying to get it done before I had to go to work the yeah. next day. Anyway, put a ton of time into this proposal. I didn't know how to build a proposal. So <laughs> I just like slapped a bunch of stuff together. Do we still have it? Yeah, we, we should, still have it. Can we go find it? Yeah. I want to, I want to see if we can find it. Yeah, we can show it to them. Oh man, this brings back memories. Mm -hmm. I, I dumped so much time into this. I remember you took pictures of this place so I could recreate it in SketchUp. And I then, did, so we could get all the dimensions of the rooms right and like the width of the walls and oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so okay. they wanted two bar, two 15 foot bars, six tables, 12 benches. A set of shelves for behind one bar and a pallet bench. Yes, that's when the pallet furniture was so big. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, so the tables and benches, I was just gonna build all the lower stuff out of steel and the gray, and yeah. then I was gonna build all the top out of just like pallet wood-ish pine Because they wanted stuff. it very like rustic industrial type. And then these feel. bars, look at these bars. I was, oh, I put a lot of time into this design. There's metal and wood on these bars. And then I think they wanted like countertops. Right, and, and then the other half uh. was going to be a dance bar at night. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted a separate bar for that. And they all then, had like LED lights in them. Oh my gosh, look at this, okay. Look at this pricing. Oh, oh. my gosh, I can't <laughs> believe I was gonna sell a six foot table for $315. That blows my mind. Because for us, we were, I think we were scared because they were gonna have to buy so many. We're like, they're gonna freak out at the price if we tell them, we're like, what's the lowest we can get this down to? I mean, these are still profitable prices, but when you're doing restaurant build outs, like it's the bank's money. So people, right. there's a higher perceived value on the objects. So yeah, the bar we were only gonna charge like four grand for, and that should have been, though each of those bars should have probably been yeah. 10 grand at least. Yeah. Because they're going to make money on this furniture. That's the yes. other thing. It's not just, this is not just a customer gonna buy a, a kitchen table for their house. This is a business that's going to make money mm -hmm. using these objects. So you can really charge up to how much money they're gonna make with the bar mm -hmm. for the bar. So it's just, it's a different market. But yeah. geez, we had these nice price breakdowns. Yes. Which we do not do this anymore. The more information you put in your bid, the more you're letting your customer argue with you over every last little charge. So we do not do this anymore. Yeah. We just give a total price just like this uh, at the top. We, we only give pricing and deliverables for each thing. Oh yeah, and then we wrote him up a whole schedule. Right, because we wanted to be done with all this before all the snow and the cold set And so in. did they, but yeah, and right at the top, agreement signed, <laughs> amount paid, <laughs> work begins. Oh wait, yeah, agreement signed, work begins. That was the thing that saved us, that one right there. Yes. Man. So this schedule right here, if, you, if you're doing contracts, if you want to do a build out like this, this schedule is what's going to save you. That way you don't do work without getting paid for yep. it. So, man, and then we've got all of the terms and conditions down there. But, yeah. man, this really brings back a lot of money. You know, I like, I still like this design. Yeah, I do too. It's not my style anymore, but like... I, I, I would go to a beer garden that had that style I would, and I would think it was cool. But I'm biased. But I'm biased. <laughs> but all I had was SketchUp and the little pricing formula that's in our little calculator on our website. So you can use it if you want, jennydavis.com slash price my work. Um, but we used that little formula to try and come up with a ballpark price to give her on this whole build out. You know, we didn't price it perfectly, but the important part was we came up with a price. We had a price, we were confident in it, we wrote it up in this proposal of sorts <laughs> that wasn't like super formal by any means, but at least it was on paper. They accepted our bid on the build up, which was really exciting. But after the bid got accepted, that's when things got really <laughs> weird. We were super excited. I knew that this was such a big order, such a big job that I shouldn't do any work on it until we had a down payment. Yep. That was probably the thing that saved our butts yes. on this job. Was that we refused to buy any of the lumber until they had paid their down payment, which was good. I'm so glad we stuck to our guns on that one. And you know what makes me so happy? Is that something that like the guys and girls in the stud stack like we're all on board on yes. that. Like, oh my gosh, I can't tell you, like the number of times the stud stack has come in when somebody's like celebrated, like nailing a big job. We're just like, hey, don't buy anything, get a down payment. Yeah. And everybody's so encouraging and supportive. Yep. Like, and so. now looking back at this experience, this story is exactly why we get a down payment on any job we do. And that's why we preach it to other people, get a down payment. They accepted our bid on the build up, which was really exciting. But after that, I tried reaching back out. I was like, great, it was accepted. So, hey, um, we'd love to start buying some of the lumber to start building your tables and your bar, just waiting on the down payment to come through. Silence. I would send them multiple text messages. I would send emails. I would try to call them. I would leave them voicemails. I would even go into the coffee shop to try to meet them in person, but I would always just catch their employees there. So we had this giant bid that was accepted. We were we were so excited. I was I was pricing out lumber. I wasn't buying anything, mm -hmm. but I was pricing out lumber. I was practicing my welding skills. I was really excited. But Jenny couldn't get a hold of the customer and the deadline was approaching. Winter was coming in North Dakota and we wanted to get all this done before the heavy cold set in. So uh, we mustered up the courage to go to the coffee shop one day and to our disappointment, the coffee shop was closed. The doors were locked, the lights were off, 
nobody was there. The coffee shop was closed down. The next week when I went into work, I had some friends who were very entrepreneurial and they started talking about this coffee shop that they wanted to buy. And they were talking about how that coffee shop wanted to use the money and the profits from the coffee shop and funnel it into a brand new restaurant. And so of course my ears perked up because I was like, that's a pretty rare scenario. I highly doubt there's a second set of people wanting to do the exact same thing that this coffee shop did that I was just talking to. So we were just quiet. We just listened, you know, like good friends do. We asked questions and all the while we're just trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Our friends told us that the bank told them they weren't gonna give them a loan to buy the coffee shop because the owners were embezzling money. They weren't paying taxes. They weren't paying their employees. That our friends were trying to buy this coffee shop from these scumbags. The business was basically upside down and bleeding cash. And our friends were actually taking the owners to court to get their earnest money back when they said they wanted to buy the business. You don't have to be a detective to connect the dots here. This was the same owner of the coffee shop that we had a bid accepted on to do the restaurant build out. And I am so glad that we never bought any lumber for this project. We never spent a dime on this project because we never got a down payment and that saved us. And even though we lost this $15,000 job, we learned so many things throughout the process, like how to write a proposal, how underpriced we were, and how we could think big. We could take jobs like this realistically. Writing this proposal fundamentally changed the way that we did business. It expanded our goals. It expanded what we thought we could do with this little side hustle business in our garage. And from that day forward, I dreamed of the day where I could buy as much lumber as I did this week without having to worry about how much it costs. And look at us now, all that lumber I showed you at the beginning of the video is gonna turn into $45,000 worth of cutting and charcuterie boards. And the best part is, based on what we learned from this story, all of our inventory has already been sold. I don't build things until after we've gotten the money. And we learned that lesson from this story. So we have to try things and fail and, and do it before we feel like we're ready to do it. Otherwise, we're not gonna learn what we need to learn. Losing this $15,000 job taught us how to make a hundred times more money than that. Anyway, to finish the story for you guys, I don't think our friends ever ended up getting their earnest money back. Which really sucks. Yeah, that was disappointing. The owners of the coffee shop, I believe, fled the country and were gonna like go to jail if they ever came back to the US. It was a sticky situation for them. But you know what? I'm so glad we were a part of this dumpster fire of a situation because we were able to capitalize on it and learn how to make so much money from the things that we learned doing this job. We didn't overthink it. We just set clear boundaries and we pushed it as far as it would go and it just didn't pan out, but we were able to learn things along the way that are way more valuable than $15,000 would have been. And if you enjoy watching our videos and you sell what you make, we wanna encourage you to join the Stud Stack. We can pool resources and lessons together so that we can all save money and grow our businesses a lot faster. Sign up today, it's literally cheaper than dog food to join the Stud Stack. But up next, watch this video about how we made our first $10,000 on accident. I